Hello everybody, you're very welcome to this episode of Programming and Algorithms. In this episode we're going to look at structured programming. So in structured programming we're going to think about modules, we're going to look at parameter passing, we'll look at return values, variable scope, and local and global variables. So we've seen a bit of this story already in terms of modularization. We know if we take a program like the prime number program, where we check if a number is prime or not, we can divide that up into two chunks. And we've done that already. And we've ended up with two modules, one called prime checker and the other called the, the overall program, which is check prime. So prime checker and check prime are then two bits that overall achieve the program. We like the idea of breaking a program down into bits, which is modularization, because it's easier for somebody to understand how the code works. And it's a lot easier if you're working in a team. Each member of the team can develop different bits of the code, so they could be working on different methods or modules. Uh, a number of studies have shown that it actually improves the quality of the code, and it allows you the opportunity to reuse the small chunks of code over and over again. So with our code, our, our prime checker and our check prime programs as before, we note that there is a statement is return is prime. So in the module or method, we have uh, at the end of the program, we have a return statement that says, once you've determined whether the, the number input is prime or not, return that Boolean variable from the method or module prime checker to the program that's called it, in this case, check prime. And then as you can see in the code in check prime, it says if prime checker equals equals false. So that is, if what I've returned is that, that the number is not prime, then say it's not a prime number, I'll say it is a prime number. So we're passing the output of the module prime checker to the main program check prime using the variable is prime, and we use the return statement to allow us to do that. So typically we only return one value using the return statement, and it returns from the it returns a value to the calling program from the called program. And it's normally only one value. So it's up to the program that is calling the module to capture that value when it comes back. In this version of the code, it is interesting the way it's broken up. One half of the code reads in the value and checks if that number is prime, and then the second half of the value prints out the answer as to whether or not it's prime. So if we look at the code as it is, we can see the, the module reads in a value, then checks if it's prime, whereas the main program prints out the answer whether or not it's prime. Uh, not that it's terribly bad design, but it's probably slightly bad design to end up with a situation where you have a, a module that's doing two different things. One, reading in the value, and then second, it's checking if the number is prime or not. So in actuality, many um, program designers would argue it's better, a better standard of programming to, to not be reading in the value for the prime checker code and have the main part of the program reading in the value. So how would we do that? Well, we do that by taking our existing code and then moving the read, the read part from the module prime checker into the main part. So now we've got read value and then we check um, if prime checker for that value is true or false. So the key changes there is we've moved the read value from the module to the main program and we've changed how we call the main program. Instead of calling it prime checker open bracket close bracket, now we do prime checker val, the, the input value. As a consequence of that, that means that value has to be passed into the module. And in this case, we, we whatever name we use in the main program, we don't have to use that in the module definition of the parameter. And we've called it A just for fun. And instead of reading in A, we're taking in A for, as a parameter from the main program. So what it goes in as val from the main program becomes A in the module, and then we, we take one away from A, and we check in the standard way. And then when we've finished the prime checker module, we simply return is, tr is primer or not as before. So it's a very small change, but instead of a main program calling a, a module with no parameters and returning a value back, we have a main program calling a module with one parameter. 
and then returning a one value back. So then our module to check if a number is prime or not now is simply doing that. It's just checking if the number is prime. It receives in a value and then it checks if that number is prime or not. So it's doing one thing well as opposed to two things. And then the main program is taking care of reading in the value and checking and printing out whether it's prime. When I call a method, I can call it with no parameters, with one parameter, with two parameters. And I simply just give the parameter names separated by commas within the brackets. And that's all I do. The number of parameters I call a method with, then it, that's how I have to define the method to accept those number of parameters. They have to match in terms of the, the code. So then, as we said, if I call prime checker with value, then that can be read in as A or B or value or any, any, any variable name at all. Also, the benefit of this, though, then is on the command line, I can type in prime checker open bracket 26 and I can check if that's prime as well. So because I'm not reading in the value in prime checker anymore, that means that module prime checker can be used in a variety of different ways, which is really excellent coding and it's much more software reuse. I'll move on to another topic now, which is variable scope. The notion that if I have a module or method, if I declare a variable within that module or method, then the, that, uh, the variable I've declared is only visible within the module or method. In a different module or method, you can't see what value that variable has. It's called binding sometimes as well. But I, so they are called local variables. They're local to a particular module. If I declare a, a, a variable though outside of any modules in the main program, then we call that a global variable because all modules can see it. So that's the scope of a variable. It's simply what part of the program where the binding or variable value is valid. So it's either a local variable or a global variable. Global means all the modules can see it. Local means only the current module can see it. If I declare a variable inside a module, chances are only that module can see it. If I declare a variable in the main program, then all modules and the main can see that variable's value. Sometimes we call that visibility as well. So in our case here, variable one is only visible in method one, variable two is only visible in method two, whereas variable x is visible for method one, for method two, and any other methods that exist within the program. So here's an example in, in pseudocode. If I have a module called my method, and it has a, and I just say in my method, print out global variable. And then in the main program, I say global variable, gets the string value global variable and I call my method, it'll print out the phrase global variable. As it happens then in the main, I also print out the value of global variable as well. So it'll just print out the words global variable, global variable. Now if I declare a local copy of the, the variable, global variable, in my method, and I call the program again, the global value is global variable, I call my method, It'll print out local copy first, and then it'll print out the global one, global copy. So inside the method, if there's a variable who has the same name as a global variable, the local copy is treated as primary inside the method, and outside the method, it, the global variable is treated as primary. I'll just add one note as well. There's terminology in modularization, which we call a side effect. So if a side effect occurs if during a call to a module, the value of some object changes as a consequence of that call, or some input output occurs as a consequence of calling a module, we call that a side effect. We like modules that are side effect free, that is, that doesn't change anything. That when you call the module, it does whatever it does, and then returns back and leaves everything in the state it was. But we define certain modules as being either having side effects or being side effect free. So thanks very much. We'll see you on the next episode.